is. What up, there, he is. there he is. Hey, man, I was super pumped, and I know I haven't seen you in person since, but you got the CMA nomination. It was your first CMA nomination. One, I was shocked, but two, Me I was... Too. I, I, well, no, not, not that you got it, but that you hadn't had one yet. Like, you have so many monster songs. I've, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing, man. I was kind of, you know, it's a video of the year award, um, which is is cool because I put a lot of effort into that song with the videos, uh, kind of portrayed, I not didn't kind of portray, I took the exact story of my grandparents, um, that I told on a podcast, actually y'all, y'all, y'all's podcast. Um, and, uh, and we turned it into a video. It was amazing. And then now I'm nominated for an award. So I guess, you know, I told my grandparents get to see it. They're 98, 97. So, and they're both still around. Oh yeah. That's awesome. It, oh. Ho- homemade is the song, obviously. Um, and, I read a whole article on your on your granddad. Like it was like tell if if someone's listening to you for the first time or us for the first time, just kind of give a brief synopsis of your granddad. Okay, so uh my granddad is an amazing man. Grew up um he was born in I think 1920. Um he told me a great story about his life growing up. They didn't have a lot. It was before even before electricity. Um and uh they lived in a little small house and he grew up a farmer. His dad came to him one day and said, hey, you want to go to college? There's a guy here who will take you up to Lexington to go to University of Kentucky. So he did. Then he went into the Army, came home from the Army, and was on leave, met my met my grandmother because he was walking down the street in Mumfordville, Kentucky, after he'd hitchhiked. He took her picture, which now sounds a little creepy, <laughs> right, in today's world. But he took her picture of her, of her as she was walking into a house, and he got back to um, school in Lexington, and he started writing her notes and sending it to that. He just put the picture of the house on the envelope and uh they became pen pals and now they've been married for 75 years and uh that's crazy it's pretty neat i'm you know i'm kind of a big deal when they go to church you know and they tell their (laughs) they tell their friends that their their grandson sings country music um but now i'm a huge deal because uh because of them i got the cma nomination so it's pretty neat so his job in the military was super interesting very interesting and it's funny you bring that up because he never told me that i never knew that once i put this video out um someone contacted him and did a story on him and that's what i read and i found it and i read it and it kind of choked me up a little bit because what my granddad would do is in the service is they would send him overseas to these places of battle and he would literally ask people where where he knew people were buried um they would tell him and he would have to go dig up these 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 United States heroes that were over there and lost their lives that they never had proper, proper burials and bring them back to their family. And that was his job. And I guess now looking at, after reading that, I guess, well, no wonder he never told me that, you know, but to think about the kind person that my granddad is and the values that he has and the morals he's taught me in my life, uh, to think that he had gone through all that and, uh, never really ever mentioned it. It's kind of shows his humility and the kind of person he is. I 100% wish I could be, more like my granddad on a daily basis so something to strive towards i guess man that is great that gives me chills on my arms that's such a because i read that story about his job and i was like dang like that guy probably saw more in a year or two than we'll ever see yeah and you know you think about it my granddad's 98 years old so i thought about this the other day even especially after watching everything going on with the politics and stuff just what my grandfather has seen you know in his lifetime he was in world war ii um and I mean, just to think, seeing everything from the internet to it's it's all in front of him. So I can't imagine what his life experiences have been. But like I said, I'd love to be more like him. You guys sure. check out the video for Homemade if you haven't seen it. Um, Jake's nominated for a CMA for it. That song was a massive. Was it a massive hit during the pandemic? It was. Because you, you haven't been able to play that and hear a whole crowd sing every word of that back yet. Yeah, it's it. Uh, we had a number one. We didn't even have a number one party. We had a virtual number one party. Um, but I was pretty fortunate before before the whole pandemic started and shut everything down to be able to see kind of the reaction. You can see when a song starts turning on, you know, and uh, people really liked it. We did an acoustic tour at the beginning of the year that got shut down, but I noticed it was working. So it's pretty cool. Thanks for playing it, man. You know what's funny? You mentioned your grandparents being together over 70 years. Your parents over 40 years. Yeah. Like I saw uh, you had post a picture and they had celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary. Is it weird to say that your parents are really, really attractive? Like they are, they, have you seen I, his parents? There's I mean, no, looking, there's no wonder he looks like this. Oh, whatever, man. No, I, I, my mom is beautiful. My mom was the national watermelon queen, you know, growing up. She, t- <laughs> she, uh, went around the country telling people what they needed to know about watermelons. And, uh, 
And my dad is just a good dude. But thanks for saying that. They'll they'll appreciate hearing that on the radio for sure. You just turned 39. Are you sick of people asking if you're ready to turn 40? No, I don't know if anyone's asked me that. Uh, but I'm kind. Of, I think for like the last five to six years of my life, there's a part of us as artists, whether anyone will admit this or not, I will right here on your show, that we all sometimes struggle to accept the fact that we're getting older because we're in a business that's just pretty vain. And you want to always maintain this this youthful attitude and youthful songs. And But what I'm really starting to learn and I'm feeling very much comfort in is that as I get older, the more I learn about myself and the more I learn about who I want to be and because of who I was before. And uh, I'm actually eager as each day goes by like to see how much better I can be as a person, how much better my music can be because of it. And it's okay to like evolve with your age within your music. It's funny, I get a lot of songs pitched to me now. Um, if I'm not writing and someone will send me something and say, hey, what do you think of this, man? It's always a song about a daddy and a little girl or something. And at first I was like, man, I can't be like, I can't every song of mine be like, you're going to miss this, <laughs> you know? But uh, I now get it. Like I, I now understand when I listen to these songs, I'm like, wow, that's my mom said to me yesterday. She got a video of me doing, um, I love to read stories to my little girl. And I always read them to her in these like incredible character styles. And my mom, I guess saw a video. She's like, you need to start doing this for people. Like you need to read stories and put it out there because she's like, by the way, you are a dad. And I think when she said that, it occurred to me, I'm like, yeah, I am a dad. And I do let people know I'm a dad, but I think there's just part of me too that's like, you got to almost hide that side of your life sometimes. It feels like some of us do. And um, I don't want to do that. I want to I want to grow and accept everything that's happening. I think that's part of life and part of living. Has there been a difference in your mindset with a second baby, second kid? Yeah. How did that change you? Well, the first, my first child, Pearl, um, I was running and gunning at that time when she was born in 2012 you know barefoot blue jean i just hit like big and it changed my life and before that i i was running and gunning but nothing was happening and then all of a sudden that hit and it was like have a baby back on the road and she traveled the world she traveled everywhere with me and now this second time around it's really cool because i say cool it's probably the wrong term to use um with this pandemic happening it shut everything down so i've had Every night, I can read stories to my little girl. I can wake up in the morning and feed her and hang out with her. By the way, as y'all know, like kids in the morning are awesome because they're in a super good mood. They want to just <laughs> lay on your shoulder, watch cartoons, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, the second time around is just giving me a second chance to do the things that I never did before. And uh, even though Pearl and I have an amazing relationship, I think having this time with Paris to kind of watch her grow and be a part of her life more than just the guy that's coming in and out of town on Wednesdays and Sundays is is a little little bit better. Let me remind everybody again, Jake has been nominated for a CMA award. He's nominated for video of the year for Homemade. Wow. It's uh, Jake. It stars Jake, but it's him like an autobiographical, uh, autobiographical narrative of your grandparents, which is their story. You're playing yeah. your granddad. Yep. You have the old hat on. and It works, man. It was cool. It was pretty weird. I have a picture that we recreated as well of my grandmother and my grandfather. Um, and the girl that they chose to be in the video looked a lot like my, I call my nanny, nanny. So she looked a lot like my nanny. So it was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a cool video. Obviously got nominated. So it's my first nomination. You know that I've never performed on an award show in my entire career. Wow. ACM, CMA, never. No, yeah. I would not think that. I would. I, I was surprised that he hadn't been nominated for a CMA. He said, again, Jake has eight number one songs and, and tours like crazy. Hmm. And it's it's like one of the weird massive stars that have slipped through the cracks with the voters. And so it's like you you need some sort of drum to be beat in your honors. Because if you I beat don't, you, I really don't, no, you, man. No, but, I, like I'm I'm cool. I've had a great career and I, I used to get mad at stuff like that. I really did. Like all artists, like I've seen artists do it. They tweet when they're like, oh, I didn't get the nominations that I was like, stop. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. This so doesn't... how would you handle the anger if you didn't tweet? Like, where Don't would... get me wrong. I, I have anger. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but I don't no, tweet about it because what does that do? It only right. makes you look like, like you're sad and bitter about it. And right. um, to me, it just is what it is. Like every business is a business and behind the business, there's politics. And, um, so I've, you know what, like I said, I, I get to wake up and watch cartoons with my little girl, man. And I get to live a life like a lot of people don't. And it's all because I sing music and songs and I surround myself with people that believe in me and they help me. And so for me to feel upset about 
not being nominated for things or not being on award shows or whatnot. It's really not fair to the people around me that work really hard to help place me in those positions. So, man, I don't know. I am pissed, though, about it. I'll be <laughs> <laughs> we got him back. He's back, baby. He's back. Hey, did you know Mac Davis? Very well. He passed I, away earlier this week. Yeah. Uh, Mac Davis, uh, I can't say enough about that guy because – um, I got to meet him for the first time about six years ago, if not more, seven years ago. Um, when I was at Country in the Rockies, I was I broke my collarbone coming down uh, the slope. First day, first run, fell on my face snowboarding, broke my collarbone, and I couldn't go home because I had this bone kind of coming out of my, my skin. And they wanted to do uh, surgery there, and I wouldn't let that happen. So they said, all right, we'll just have to wait two days, and then we'll, get, we'll fly us all home. So as I was sitting there in my room while everybody else is skiing the next day uh on like whatever painkillers they gave me i'm like sitting there and i got a knock on the door and uh i said come in and came comes in mac davis and he's like hey man i I hurt my cornea i can't ski but i brought my guitar and just thought i could sit by your bed and play some songs for you we can maybe write one Wow. I was like, wow, <laughs> Mac did, really? And he sat down with me for three hours, and I would say, hey, will you play, um, like, Hard to Be Humble? Or, or will you play uh, Happiness was, you know, uh, was just Texas in my rearview mirror, Lubbock, Texas in my rearview mirror, and songs like uh, I Believe in Music and all, watching Scotty grow. Uh, he, you know, he wrote uh, in, the, in, in the Ghetto, ghetto you know? yeah. for Elvis, and he wrote the uh, this huge hit Avicii had. That, a lot of people like don't know that. in Ibiza? No, 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 that was Mike Posner. That was, that was did, his, his other buddy. He did not write that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's your other friend. He, uh, you gave me right. <laughs> thanks for chiming in, Amy. That's awesome. But no, Mac Davis, an amazing man. But more importantly, how I got to know Mac outside of the music was he loves golf. And he's a member at our golf club. And I just saw him last week. And every time I'd see Mac, he'd go, Jake, I've been thinking about something. And he'd go, what do you think of this? And then he would always run by a, a, a neat idea or a title to me. And I was always like, yeah, well, that's an awesome idea. And he'd look at me, well, then let's ride it. <laughs> and we never did. But uh, I saw him last week at the golf course. And then to think that I talked to his wife the other night, um, texted her and told her I was there in my prayers. And I know that, that – that she's struggling and their family. He's a great father. He's got, he's got children he's a husband. Um, so it's sad that he's gone, but more important, I think everybody send prayers and thoughts to his family. Cause he's got a beautiful family. That's a really cool story. You mentioned golf. I'll say that I had been and had a couple people kind of work with me a little bit and I really couldn't get anywhere. Really wasn't getting any better at golf. So I send Jake a text message. I go, dude, I'm struggling. And he goes, all right, send me a video. So I sent Jake a video and Jake goes home grabs all his gear, walks outside, and basically in, in, within a half hour sends me a full lesson back nice. on my phone. And he's like, this is what you're doing. He goes, do it. Duh, 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 duh. So I walk over and I hit some balls. I got a little place over the house. I can hit balls. So I hit, hit some balls, send him a video back. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So tomorrow, next day he checks in. Hey, how's the swing going? Let me see it again. So for like two days, I'm getting a virtual golf lesson from Jake. And he's like, let's play. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. <laughs> you're too good. You're like, nah, a, are you the best it. golfer artist in country music? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of great players, too, in this format that don't even talk about playing golf. Like, I saw Dustin Lynch in a golf ball a while back and blew my mind. Like, I was like, what? How do, I didn't even know you played golf. He's like, you know, I he, like that about certain college. people. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that either. He doesn't talk about it. Um, Kip Moore's a really good player. 